Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we are going to be covering the causative passive form uh, conjugation of verb words basically. So if you don't know, we have done video lessons on the causative form for verbs and the passive form for verbs. We have video lessons on both of those topics. Uh, I believe we actually have three on the passive form because it's such an intense topic and two for the causative form. So, uh, needless to say, probably you should watch those lessons before you jump into this one. Um, those ones tell you what the causative form is, how to make it, uh, with the passive form too. And now we're going to cover the kind of combo of both of them. So the causative passive form, what is, what is this? What do we use this for? Um, well, we know that the causative form is used when you say that someone um, make someone does something. So I made him do this. And then we have the passive form where we're using this passive voice where the subject of the sentence isn't the one doing the action. There's kind of this emphasis on us receiving the action, um, but somehow we're still the subject. So I was told to do this or I was attacked or something like that. The key word in those lines um, is the word was which signifies the passive form. So then when we do causative passive form, um, what does that turn into? Well that just turns into an expression that the subject of the sentence was made um, to do something by someone else or something else. So it might be a little hard to wrap your head around it but overall it's pretty simple. In English this would translate to something like I was made to do my chores by my mom or something like that would be a causative passive form um, sentence and while it isn't extremely common in conversation, you know, it has a grammatical function slash significance and it will undoubtedly show up every now and then. So what we're going to do in this video lesson is we are going to cover both how to conjugate verbs into their causative passive form, the construction basically, and we're also going to cover example senses in which the form is used in actual sentences and how that evokes, expresses that meaning of uh, was made to do something or am made to do something, causative passive form. So let's do this. All right, so first up, of course, comes the construction. How do I conjugate a verb into the causative passive form before I even begin to use it? And like I said at the beginning, we need to know how to conjugate verbs into first their causative form and then also their passive form. So I'm not going to quite do a full review on both of those in this lesson. I'll provide a link in the description and in the comment below to the respective videos on those lessons so you can watch those before so you know how to conjugate them into those respective forms and we can do this um, hybrid form now. So the conjugation into the causative passive form is actually really simple once you know those two again. All we're going to do is we're going to take the causative form of a verb and in turn conjugate that into the passive form just like the name implies because the causative passive, the word causative is in front and passive is behind. So we do the causative first, then we do the passive. So as we should know, when we turn things into the passive form, you know, there's different guidelines that we follow depending on what kind of word it is. It could be a ru verb or it can be an u verb and our kind of directions are different depending on which one. But that doesn't really matter in this case when we're doing causative passive because we need the causative form first and every single causative form verb is actually just going to be a ru verb. So we only need to follow the guideline of ru verbs into their passive form and that just simply means replacing the ru with rararu. And so most of the time this will result in a word that ends with the very long sound of sase rararu. That's not always going to be the case because of the guidelines for conjugating causative form of verbs. Um, the sa at the beginning will sometimes be something else, but the last sound in that will always be a. So basically all words conjugated into the causative passive form will um, end in ase rararu. So all of that contextual information thrown at you might still um, be confusing. So now let's just jump into some example verbs that we can turn into their causative passive form. So let's start off with the word taberu, to eat. That is going to turn into we have the word miru, which means to see, to watch. That is going to turn into misasereru. Next up, we have the word you, which means to say, to speak. Um, this is going to be the first word that we cover that isn't going to have the sa at the beginning of the ending sound of it. Instead, it's going to be a wa because of the way causative conjugation works. So you is going to turn into iwasereru. Next up, we have the word kao, to mean to buy. That is going to change into kawasereru. And we'll do one more before we jump into the irregulars. We'll do the verb yomu, which means to read. That's going to turn into 
Yomase rareru. Lastly, we have the two irregular verbs that always show up as irregular verbs pretty much. We have the verb kuru, which means to come, and the verb suru, which means to do. These are gonna change into kosa rareru and sase rareru, respectively. And so yeah, one last thing we'll mention before jumping into the example sentences now is that um, just by construction, this grammar pattern is usually gonna be used when you have a subject and another kind of entity which would be the thing that is making the subject do something. So um, usually that entity that does the forcing to the subject is going to be indicated by the particle ni. It won't always show up in the actual sentence explicitly just because it might be implied, but um, yeah, when it does, it'll probably be indicated by the particle ni. Okay, we are going to jump into our example sentences now, and our first one is going to be a really simple one. It's just going to be two words pretty much, and it is going to be Kando sasereta. Naturally, this line is going to translate to just simply I was moved, as in moved as in feelings, not the literal action of uh, movement. However, if we want to interpret it more in line with uh, the literal meaning of this grammar pattern, it'll be something along the lines of I was forced to feel, basically. So let's break down the sentence bit by bit and see how that's uh, working out there. We are just going to have a pretty much a verbal noun which is kando suru, which means um, to be moved basically, to feel something along those lines. And so just normally by itself, kando suru is to be moved or that will be its definition. However, when we conjugate into the causative passive form, its definition is then going to change into basically I am forced to be moved by someone else. And of course note here the extra ta at the end instead of the ru to uh, denote that it's in the past tense. So I was forced to be moved by something else is what it's literally translating to. Here, um, the sentence is going to have the implied entity, the thing that made you be moved, it's going to be implied so it's not explicitly stated. Maybe you watched a movie or something, or someone was making a speech. Uh, then you just say, and that's going to translate to, I was moved, uh, more literally, I was forced to feel, or something like that. Let's move on to our next example sentence. Next up, we have the line, Itsumo kanojo ni kaimono ni ikase rareru. This right here is going to translate to something along the lines of I'm always uh, made to go shopping uh, by my girlfriend or I am always forced to go shopping by my girlfriend. So let's break down the sentence bit by bit to see how this is working here. Uh, first up we just have the word itsumo which is going to be kind of like a time word that just means always. Next up we have Kanojo ni. This is the word kanojo, which means she or girlfriend. Um, the particle ni there is uh, marking the kanojo as the entity that does the forcing, like I mentioned in the construction. So basically, what we have so far, itsumo kanojo ni is going to translate to always by my girlfriend. Now we're going to get into the actual thing that is um, being forced upon me, and that's going to be kaimono, which means shopping. Uh, the particle ni, because this is the grammar pattern where we use a noun plus particle ni plus a going verb to mean going to do that noun. So our going verb is going to be the verb iku, which means to go. So kaimono ni iku is going to be to go shopping. And the word iku is going to be the verb that we want to conjugate into the causative passive form because this is the verb that I was forced to do or I am forced to do. So iku turns into ikase rareru and this is going to translate to, again, I am, am forced to go. And here it's just going to stay in the uh, basically plain dictionary form after we conjugate into the causative passive form because this is like an ongoing thing that happens um, which is indicated by the word itsumo at the beginning of our sentence so let's wrap it all together again itsumo kanojo ni kaimono ni ikase rareru is going to be uh, I am always being forced to go shopping by my girlfriend or I am always forced to go shopping uh, by my girlfriend. Alright, let's go over another example sentence. Our next one is going to be Gakusei wa sensei ni takusan kanji o kakase rarete iru. This line right here is going to translate into um, the students are forced to write a lot of kanji by their teacher or the teacher. So let's break down the sentence bit by bit. Uh, first up we have gakusei which means students so, or students and then we have the particle wa to mark them as the topic. So um, these are the students are the topic and probably the subject as well so these are gonna be or they're going to be the entity that is being forced to do something. We find out what the other entity who's doing the forcing is right after because we have sensei 
other than the particle ni to mark the sensei as the thing that's making us do the thing. Next up, we're going to have our direct object to the verb. I think this is our first example of the direct object. That's just going to simply be kanji. Uh, the Chinese characters that are used in the Japanese language. We're going to mark kanji with the particle o because it's the direct object marker. And now let's introduce our verb, which is going to be the word kaku, which means to write. And now we need to conjugate it into our causative passive form. So kaku turns into kakasereru. And this is then going to be changed into the te form because we want to express um, the idea of an ongoing action of being forced. So kakasereru is going to be kakasererete. And this is going to then come with another iru verb but right after it to do the te form of verb plus the word iru to mean um, our verb or is verb. And so let's uh, wrap it all together once again. Gakusei wa sensei ni takusan kanji o kakaserarete iru is going to be uh, the students are forced to write a lot of kanji by the teacher. Okay, we'll do one more example sentence. Uh, we'll make this one pretty long. We're gonna take this example line that I saw in an article I read. Kirai na mono muri yari tabe sasereareta koto de masu masu dai kirai ni naru koto mo aru. So this line is gonna translate to uh, something along the lines of there are times when, or it is possible that when forced to eat something that they don't like against their will, people will grow to um, hate it even more so. So yeah, it's a pretty bulky sentence, so let's break it down word by word to get a complete idea of what this line is saying. So first up, we have kirai na mono, and this is just simply gonna be um, the word kirai, which means hate. We have the particle na to um, use it as a na adjective to modify the noun right after, which is the noun word mono, which just means thing. So kirai na mono is just going to be thing that is hated or hated thing. We have the direct object marker o to mark mono as the direct object of the verb that we're about to use. Uh, but before that, we're going to use an adverb, muriyari, which means uh, basically against one's will. And then our verb is going to be taberu, which means to eat. That was one of the words that we did in the example of conjugating into the causative passive form. So what is the causative passive form of taberu again? It is tabe sasereru. Here it's going to be in the ta form, and then it's going to be used to modify the word koto. The word koto is then followed by the particle de, which is kind of acting as an instrument marker here. So by means of being forced against one's will to eat something they don't like is what that is translating to so far. Uh, then we move on to the second half of the sentence. We have the word must must, which is basically an adverb that basically translates to more and more basically or increasingly so, something along those lines. Then we have kirai again, which is actually going to be dai kirai now, which means really hate or really dislike or hate. Uh, then we have the ni naru grammar pattern, which means to become. So dai kirai ni naru is basically to become more hated or even more so hated. Ni naru as a kind of verb phrase there is going to be modifying the noun right after it, which is the noun koto once again. And uh, then we have mo aru. So koto mo aru means there are times when or there are things when uh, more naturally that could just be it's possible that. So then uh, when we wrap it all together, it's going to be something along the lines of it is possible that when forced to eat something against their own will that they don't like, people grow to hate it even more. Alrighty, that is going to cover it for the last example sentence for this lesson as well as the lesson um, in and of itself. So hopefully you learned how to, um, you got a grasp of how to use the causative passive form um, and you got a refresher on the passive and causative form respectively if you were kind of, um, I was kind of brushing off your memory. Uh, we are going to include um, some more example sentences and a couple of more information in the description and we'll put some stuff in the links in the comments below so check those out watch the previous videos if you didn't um, to really lock this down so yeah okay so that's going to wrap it up for this video i hope you learned something and i hope you enjoyed your time doing so if you'd like to express that you can like the video leave a comment below or subscribe if you haven't already if you'd like to support more of these video lessons please do consider checking out our patreon page also included on the screen right now are of course a bunch of links on where to find and follow us elsewhere online lastly check out our discord server we've got a community of hundreds of so if you're looking for somebody to voice chat with just to practice speaking Japanese or if you just want to talk about uh, anime or music or manga and with that see you next time